Mercedes were back on form in Russia, but can they keep their winning form going into the land of the rising sun? We'll be attempting to answer that and much more on this week's Grid Talk podcast. Hosting today will be me, George Housen. Joining me today are journalism student Louis Edwards. Hello. And ed- engineering student Owen Medford. Hi. Thank you for joining us, lads. So, ahead of Japan, I think it's fair to say Mercedes have done well there in the past. So they've done well uh, most places. They've won every race in the hybrid era uh, so far there. But won't be that simple this time round, do you think, Owen? Uh, probably not. I think I think Ferrari, Ferrari's Ferrari Ferrari's <laughs> resurgent. <laughs> It's, it's, it's new. It's new. Even faster wasabi. <laughs> <laughs> just, just chuck some wasabi into the engine. You know, give it a bit, a bit more horsepower, just like VTEC or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what that is. That's variable valve timing. <laughs> a variable valve. No cam profile. Sorry. <laughs> See, I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think Owen, what you're trying to say is that uh, yeah, uh, it's done well in the past, but Ferrari still have the fastest car. They did show that in Russia. <laughs> Albeit their strategy was lacking and reliability for that matter too. Um, but yeah, Louis, what do you think? I mean, like Japan is a track where you need a lot of downforce, especially for the first sector, uh, where Mercedes are stronger than Ferrari, arguably. But there's a lot of long stretches where you need that power, and Ferrari do have the most powerful engine at the moment. Yeah, it's it's, it's going to be a difficult one. Though. I would say this is going to be very much like Singapore in that sort of sense, with Singapore's got its tight sections where you require the downforce, but we still saw Ferrari dominate on the stretches with the long straights and the high power sections. So I think it's going to be very much similar in that sort of sense. But I think Mercedes can sort of, they've come into this from Russia where that had a lot of, where you would have thought that Ferrari would be the fastest car, they came out with a one-two. So I think they can come into this weekend with some confidence that they could replicate that. Yeah, strategy is definitely going to play a part. Tire wear is always a challenge around Japan. Um, and Ferrari arguably not doing as well as Mercedes in that regard this season. But there's a third team in all this mix as well, a team that has had a lot of success there in the past, Red Bull. It can, it's genuinely a, a proper three-way fight or six-way fight in terms of drivers, at least, for the win this weekend, isn't it, Wayne? I think so, yeah. Um, obviously, like you say, Japan's very sort of technical at the first day, uh, first sector. And then the, the later, later two sectors, it goes more sort of towards Ferrari's advantage. But I think if... I think if... Red Bull are fast enough in the first sector, they can probably counteract some of the straight-line speed disadvantage they have. Hmm. Yeah, and Honda do have their upgrades this weekend as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, they'll be they'll be wanting to show they'll like it's their home race essentially. It's their second home race, so hmm. they'll be wanting to uh, to show what they can do for their home crowd. Yeah, definitely, they definitely will not want to show that the a GP2 engine or anything like that. They've got their upgrades in, and they took the penalties in Russia for it. They've still got some good results there. I think Taurus have got some points too. But yeah, no, I mean, but the Honda engine though, Louis, no slouch this season, is it? No, um, it's it's actually been incredible. I think we've, I know you people say don't judge testing, but from testing sort of onwards, we've seen like, wow, there's been actually a big upgrade in a reliability, which was a big hamper in the, in the McLaren days. And just does seem to have a lot more power than it did last season. It's, I think this is what Honda needed in Formula One. They needed a team that were willing to work with them rather than just demand engines and, Red Bull and Honda partnership this year has been absolutely incredible. Yeah, very successful as well. They got quite, I think, got two wins this season as well with Max Verstappen. It's going to be a very interesting race at the front. Some people do criticise F1 for being a bit boring at the front. I think it's going to be very close this weekend. But yeah, so if you had to choose one though, Wayne, who would you go for? If you had to be bold, who would you say would be the team on top? Because Ferrari have got, I think, four poles in a row at the moment. And Qualifying is very important in Japan. Overtaking is difficult around Suzuka. Would you say the red cars have the advantage going into this one? Yeah, I think they do. I think the fact that they've managed to get four pop, like they've definitely got the, the one lap pace that's significantly better than anyone else the, the, with the, obviously the more powerful engine, but also the upgrades that they've, they've brought recently that have seemed to have sort of fixed the, uh, the front end issues that they seem to have for the first sort of 
two thirds of the season. So that's obviously done them well in Singapore, where we expected Mercedes would would actually be better. So, yeah, yeah. I think I think to be honest, for, for a pole, it's got to be it's got to be Ferrari. Mm, yeah, I'm just looking at the uh, the forecast now for the weather. As we know, as British people, it's unreliable. However, both Saturday and Sunday it's meant to rain in Suzuka, so. That definitely throws a spanner into the works. And Ferrari have shown yet again in Russia that uh, under pressure, they crack when it comes to strategy, Louis. Yeah. I think this is where Mercedes and Red Bull sort of come into their element, sort of with the wet racing. They've got the, arguably the best drivers for it. So Ferrari needs to definitely be wary of, of the rain because that's where it cancels out their power sort of advantage because... And you need that downforce, which the Mercedes and the Red Bull have. I think if it does rain, it could be an incredibly interesting race. We've seen wet races around Suzuka before. They've always been really good. So hopefully the rain does sort of throw a spanner in the works and make this another interesting race. Yeah, it should do. It's always eventful when it rains in, a, in Suzuka. It's hell of a track in the wet. And if it does rain, then perhaps especially based on what happened in Germany, perhaps that hands the advantage to Red Bull away. Yeah, it could do. Um, I, don't, I don't know how much of an outlier Germany was, because I've, you know... A very big one, I think. I don't know, because I'm just kind of like, well, you know, I know that these, these are not bad drivers, you know, they're not thrown in, into the wall for the fun of it. Not bad drivers, <laughs> the form of the one grid, they're not bad, they're all right. Yeah, well, I no, know. I, you know, they're not they're not amateurs. They're not sort of like you know Dempsey Pro on Racing's uh, <laughs> gentleman driver for for Le Mans this year. You know, they're not trying to throw it off into the wall. I, I just don't know how we we haven't had enough wet races to actually know what how a the field stacks up when it rains, like how the how obviously that changes the balance of the car and everything, and that that might hand the advantage from one team to another. But also, I, I just don't. I don't know what their skill level is at. Like, I don't know how in tune they are with it, but bearing in mind, everyone seemed to throw it off. Yeah, pretty much everyone made a mistake. But a guy that I don't... Well, actually, I think he made a little mistake, actually, in, in, in Germany. But the guy who won, obviously, in Germany, and the guy that we know is extremely talented in the wet, Max Verstappen, if it does rain, if it is unpredictable, he's got a very good shot at the win, doesn't he, Louis? Yeah, I think he does. He, we've seen time and time again his immense skill in the wet and he was one of the very few drivers that didn't go on to the drag strip of doom in germany so <laughs> so i think he's got a he's got a realistic shot of the win but also we saw for the first half of that german grand prix if we're going to take it as sort of a how drivers were in the wet lewis hamilton did a fantastic job it was just a simple mistake that completely cost him his race so yeah you can't rule out how Lewis Hamilton will do, but Max is definitely going to be up there, especially in the wet conditions. Yeah, he's definitely got a chance to back down. And and Albon for that matter. I, mean, I imagine growing up in Britain, he's got a very good experience in the wet as well. So in that red say, I power, know where, he, where he ended up in Germany, Albon. Yeah, I think he probably crashed out. He was on the Toro Rosso then. I know Kvyat got his podium, obviously. No, Gasly crashed into the back of him. I remember that, but he did finish. He finished quite well. Yeah, I think he was about sixth, actually, now you mention it, Louis. Yes, yeah, sixth, seventh. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's the top three. I mean, it's, it's going to be eventful. It's going to be hard to predict in that sense, especially if it rains. I think it's going to rain on qualifying day, Saturday, too. But look, looking further back from that, it should be a very interesting battle between Renault and McLaren for best of the rest, Owen. Yeah. I think McLaren probably have the edge on that one, just by, as a sort of, just thanks to their chassis, really. But that Renault is no slouch, especially in a straight line, which could help in the sort of in the last sector. Um, they might gain their time back there. Um, it's the reliability, though, that I'm, I'm suspect of. That's the the biggest issue for me is the reliability of the car. Um, yeah. Just time and time again, like Red Bull. There's a reason Red Bull left, and it was that you know Honda, even though Honda was blowing up every few races at the uh, at the start of their hybrids, hybrid engines and their efforts there, you know, they, they've, they've become more reliable and, and Renault have stood still really with their reliability. It's, one, it's been one of their biggest, they're one of their biggest Achilles heels throughout the years, like even going back to sort of, even going back to the non-hybrid era and the V8s and the V10s, they, they, they genuinely have a problem with reliability there. Mm, yeah, and they've got a problem with power too. I mean, you could argue that Renault is the 
weakest power unit on the grid. Although they did very, very well in Monza, that, that Renault has a hell of a low drag setup. But yeah, no, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tight between uh, Renault and McLaren. Uh, but obviously on current form, you would probably give McLaren, in particular Carlos Sainz, still pulling out some fantastic results in that McLaren. you give those guys the advantage, wouldn't you, Louis? Yeah, um, I think if Russia was to anything to go by, we need to, we we're seeing that McLaren are are the better team out of the two, and I mean they've, they've got a hundred points for the first time in, in absolutely ages. They've got over a hundred points in the season, mm. which is incredible. Um, so I think you know Carlos Sainz he's been doing an absolutely fantastic job. He did an amazing job in the wet in Germany. If if it does come to a wet race. I think one thing that McLaren do need to focus on is Lando and his race pace. It's it is definitely lacking. Carlos, he's got the, he's got the one lap pace. Uh, he just needs to get that race pace in, and then I think we could McLaren would definitely be hauling more points um, each weekend, getting maybe comfortable sixth and seventh, just better than the rest. But Renault can surprise us, you know, if they like they did in Monza, if they do pull something out which is incredible from Ricardo or Hulkenberg, then they can possibly walk away with a few points. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a shot of points. I mean, they've got a decent downforce package and we know they've got a decent low drag setup, but it depends what kind of setup they go down. Obviously, you need the low drag for the run to 130R in the main straight, but that downforce pretty much the rest of the track. So it will probably be kind of similar pace to Russia. Imagine in run similar-ish downforce levels to what they would in Russia around, uh, around Suzuka. And yeah, with Lando Norris as well, I mean, it's, it's hard to believe it's the guy's a rookie. I mean, he's doing incredibly well. He's still, I think he's still 19 years old. Um, unbelievable. He's, he's doing an incredible job. But yeah, you could argue he's lacking a bit on that front, but it is his first season. And he's going up against Carlos Sainz, who's in his fifth season of F1 now, I think, something like that. So... Yeah, really nitpicking there. The biggest Achilles heel of the Ren- uh, the McLaren, though, is the Renault. Yeah. Partly, undoubtedly part of the reasoning behind going to Mercedes for 2021. Uh, but yeah, a bit further back than that. Let's go Let's go down the grid a little bit further. Uh, Toro Rosso, they've got the Honda engine in the back of their car. An upgraded Honda engine, too. If it's reliable, away, they could have a shot of points this weekend. Yeah, I mean, they're up there in the standings. They're not. They're not bad. So, yeah, I can see them doing well. Toro Rosso is always quite a good, like they're they're usually quite a safe bet as a team. Obviously, they're not really allowed to compete more than uh, to, to be competing with Red Bull, but you know it's one of those things where I, I think they can do well. Um, like knowing, knowing that there's going to be rain, or there the, the possibly is going to be rain, I, that's going to throw a massive spanner in the works. So I'd, I'm I'm actually almost unwilling to predict predict it a little bit. Well, you're going to have to. That's what we're here for. Oh. Um, <laughs> you can't back out of this when you can't stay on that fence. I mean, Louis going to just drag it's you It's comfy up. here. <laughs> I know you brought your cushion up there, but we're going to have to bring it down to the harsh reality of the grass at the bottom below. So, so yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no, Toros are looking decent. And obviously, they've got that great power unit. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. Though. I don't think we touched on this on the Russia review, but it was interesting that they seemingly were allowed to race the Red Bull. They weren't just told to move aside um, and they held them up for a few laps Louis. they got decent pace in that car yeah I think I think it's just wise for you know these as the last Red Bull seat is still not actually confirmed I think it is very wise to allow the Taurus drivers to race with any Red Bull drivers because they're trying to prove something I think the Red Bull and the Red Bull management Helmut Marco will be wanting to see how um, these drivers can form against you know tough against cars that are quite frankly better than the other than their own so i think it's definitely a good thing that they're allowed to race each other allowed to race the red bulls but you know in the end in russia alex albon did come out on top and gasly and kvyat did have a little scrap but you know it's all in it's all in the good sort of good fun of racing so <laughs> yeah and they did really well in the end uh, red bull fourth and fifth them in russia um, yeah, let's let, let's go to the other teams, uh, sort of lowerish end of the grid anyway. Racing point, decent result for Paris, to say the least, in Russia. But I think it's going to be a lot harder for them this time out, isn't it, Owen? Yeah, yeah. I, to be honest, I haven't, I haven't 
liked the look of Racing Point all season. I don't know whether that's slight instability because obviously, you know, they, it's their first real season as as Racing Point instead of, you know, the the kind of slightly different regime of uh, of Force India. But it's, it just doesn't seem to have the edge that it, it seems to have last year, or mm. it's not performing as on the budget it should be really. Yeah, I mean, to be fair though, Force India always did exceptionally well on their budget. I think they were always the lowest or one of the lowest um, teams in terms of budget, but they always got a solid mid-table finish. It is hard to replicate that. It is instability, and it is also having a worse driver in Lance Stroll than uh, Esteban Ocon last year. Um, but, you know, tyres always play a part in things, and Lance Stroll, I think he got, I think he got some decent points in in Germany this year, in that absolute chaos. Perez obviously binned it after a couple of laps, but he, he, he can really pull a result out too, as we've seen in races like Malaysia 2012 and stuff like that. I mean, you never know, Louis. He could he could win a shot of points this weekend. Yeah, the, you never know what's going on with that racing point car, do you? You know, you never know when the drivers are going to turn up or not or what they're going to do. They can turn up from day to day, you know. Lance Stroll was what at the back in Canada. He ended up finishing in the points. You know, you, know, you just don't know what to how to predict these racing points but you know if they can keep their nose clean they can manage the tyres and just do a generally good strategy I think they can be sort of knocking on that door maybe 11th or 12th I think they're going to need either like some rain or something to happen in front to get the points this weekend yeah they're going to need a few retirements but there hasn't there hasn't been many retirements at all in Japan it seems to be relatively easy on the cars despite the Massive straights they've got there, but yeah, racing point they got a chance. You never know; they can they can make it awkward. And to elaborate on what I said before, Lance got fourth in Germany. It's an incredible job there too. I only just missed out on the podium, but yeah, eighth in the constructors. Alfa Romeo now, like Ferrari, they potentially have a decent package this weekend because of the engine and everything. Um, and obviously, Kimi as well, vast experience, but he just needs to cut out the silly mistakes like his jump starts, doesn't he, Owen? Yeah, that was not good. The commentary from Sky was just like, he should have kept going at that point, to be honest. You might as well have done. Why not? To <laughs> style. I, I, know, well. I know he jumped the start, but I know he jumped the start and like, let through the law, right, they've got to come down on him with a penalty for that. Mm. The jump start, he stopped. It was penalty enough. I, I personally think, well, I haven't had a chance to, but I, I personally think they should have just let him go without a penalty on that one. Yeah, because he, he was last going into turn one. He was behind the Williams. So exactly. like, I, I think he, you know, he's, he's he's punished himself enough by that. <laughs> like, at least he stopped. Well, that's fair enough. That's better than you know Alonso in like twenty ten or whatever jumping the start. Oh, China! Yeah, that was yeah. Bad, that. Yeah, I remember seeing that and thinking, oh my god! Like, no wonder he's so good at starts. He, he's just absolutely on it, but he pushed it way too far that time. Yeah, you don't really see a jump start anymore. But yeah, no, I thought that was. That's just my two cents on it. I just thought it was, it was punishment enough um, for him stopping. But yeah, yeah, it's you know Kimmy's not not doing great this year. He's doing all right, but the car's not. He's he's always outperformed Giovinazzi, which is that's that's the main thing. Yeah, you say that Giovinazzi scored twice in the last three races. I think yeah, uh, Italy and Singapore. So he's in a decent run of form. Is Giovinazzi? He's the Driver that's getting the points at the moment, but Kimi, yeah, he has he did bring on the points for the first half of the season. So it's going to be difficult though for Alfa Romeo around here, isn't it? Though, Louis, they seem to have lost a bit of momentum, haven't they, in this latter part of the season? A bit like Racing Point, to be fair. Yeah, very much like Racing Point. Um, yeah, you know, I can't see them getting if they're going to get one, they're probably going to get like a point, but I, I can't see them breaking into the top 10. This weekend on just pure, well, their own pace alone, I think my racing point is going to have to take something at the front. Like, I don't know, the A-car collision for them to get points or something. <laughs> you never know. Um, you can never rule these You never know. Before. But, you know, Kimi, Kimi's a very good driver. You never know what he can do. You know, he's got plenty of experience around here. He got that amazing win at McLaren around Suzuka. You know, so it's just give or take... Yeah, he'll have a, he's got a decent chance of getting some points in that regard, but it's going to be hard in that in that car. Now, a, a team that have been struggling a lot, and I mean a lot, Haas. Um, 
they but they managed to get points. They managed to get points in in Russia. Um, ninth place for Magnuson, eighth on the road. Fortunately, that penalty. But I think the the smooth service uh, uh, Russia definitely helped them out. As did the VSC. It's really really difficult. I think at this point they've probably just abandoned this car and just working on a 2020 car, as a few teams probably already have too. It's going to be very difficult to see them getting anything this weekend once it away. Uh, yeah, they just don't have the race pace. You know, <laughs> that has just eats tyres for lunch. Mm. You know, it, it's weird because it's so early and it's every single race. Like you say, they were helped by the very smooth and and not high degradation sur- uh, surface at, at Sochi. But Suzuka is an old track and it's also low degrada- very high degradation because of all the corners and everything. So I, th- I think they're going to they're gonna struggle if it's a dry race. Mm. So uh, they could be helped out by some good strategy, but we haven't really seen that they can do that. But they, they, they seem almost a bit toothless. Like, they're quite good. They're just not... They haven't got that punch that will take them above. They're just not fast enough, I think. Mm, yeah. I mean, they always do well in qualifying. I mean, I think it's pretty likely they'll get one car into the top 10. Like, Magnus will probably go 10th, 9th, something like that. But it's just absolutely nothing to offer in the race. It's... It's a fundamental problem with that car, and they keep trying to sort it. I think Grosjean is still on his Australia spec. He was in Russia. There was a few races before that, too. It's, it's going to be very difficult to see him scoring points. I've been that bad that even, like, it's potentially the Williams could give him a challenge during this race, Louis. I mean, if the Williams, <laughs> if the Williams wasn't as bad as it is this season, we, we would see Haas dead bottom of the <laughs> table. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, I think you know we've seen some some good performances of of late from Williams. They haven't been the tragedy that we saw in the likes of like Australia, like Bahrain. But you know, George Russell has really you know he he started to grit his teeth, really starting to get into these races. Some good quality performances and good good race race performances. It was just a shame in um in Russia that his I think it was his brakes that gave out. But hmm. you never know. It's a it's a weird. It's a, it's a, I I honestly don't know how to predict how the house will do this weekend. It's just they need a miracle, like every other team. And I'm just expecting, you know, if if Williams can come away from this race 14th or something like that, I think that's a good showing from them. Yeah. Hard times at Williams to say the least. I mean, for getting 14th and it's a good showing because it is, it absolutely is. I mean, other than I'm just looking at the results now, other than that 10th place that Kubitz had got and the 11th in Germany as well for Russell, the highest they've got is 14th this season. It's there's just nowhere near. I mean, you were saying about them showing some good performances. I mean, I think Russell was holding off a couple of cars in Singapore, but they, they don't even have reliability at the moment. Both cars retired in Sochi with the same problem. Um, with the brake issues, so even even reliability is struggling at the moment. I think I think like a few teams already they've probably just abandoned this car. I think Williams would have abandoned this car like after a few races and just stuck it all in 2020, try and get it upgraded. Yeah, it's really hard. I don't even know how to like the last time away. It's really hard to preview Williams, isn't it? It's just like they need like 10 cars to retire to get some points or something. It's yeah, they need they need a freak race. To be honest, if they haven't started, I think they've probably started on the 2021 car. To be honest. Probably haven't they been given development for it by the other teams, haven't they? No. Oh, yeah, they're like the spec model or something like that that they have to produce, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, that sounds bad. That feels bad. Well, it's just because of the slowest team, I think, or something like that. They got chose for it. Uh, okay. I, st- I, st- I still think they should be working on it now. You, ca- you can't, obviously, you can't really do that, but at this point, they should just go, right, we're going to. You know, stop the development on the 2020 car and, and just go 2021 because I, I think that's where they, uh, where William's strength will lie. Yeah, it's going to be them enduring a hell of a season again next year. But they, they seem usually they do quite well when regulation changes happen. They did in 2014, they did all right in 2017, remained about the same. But as time goes on, as the bigger budgets come in for the other teams, it just gives them no chances as, as the years go by. So. It just seems weird that Williams. You know, I always thought Williams was a top was a top four team. They you were, know? and and they they've, 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 they've been absolutely just replaced by uh, like by uh, by Red Bull. Like, 
it's, it's just they, they were up there 2015 you know they were finished third i think in the constructors ahead of red bull yeah, I, don't, you know? I don't i just don't under, i mean yeah i guess it's possible but i just don't understand where they where the the money is gone you know where the money and the effort has gone because they're not unintelligent there you know they've had some great personnel working for them as well they've had as sort of like Paddy Lowe and, and them lot all working for for them. So I don't understand what has gone completely and utterly wrong for Williams this season. To, to be fair, it can just happen. You know, they might you know, with, with the cars how they are. They're so so tightly integrated now that like obviously you get sometimes you get a perfect setup where everything aligns properly and everything works the way it should. It and and. But also, if you if you make a wrong decision on how you're going to develop the car, you know that can put you that puts you firstly on the back foot because you've lost all that time just developing your, your the, the thing you want to go for. But also, like then to catch back up, that's difficult as well. So it could just be that they fa- they unfortunately messed up the uh, the biggest the, the thing that makes the biggest issue uh, biggest difference with car performance. I think maybe. Yeah, I mean, they could got- be wrong. They got on. I mean, no, it sounds about right. I think as well, it's just because they can't explore as many options as other teams. They have to focus it all on like one one solution, for example. Whereas like the bigger teams, like Ferrari, Mercedes, Renault, they can do like three or four different options and say, right, okay, this one works. This is the best one. Whereas Williams, with a smaller budget, they have to develop one thing, and if it doesn't work, they have to spend another time doing another one, and that might not work as well. It's it's a lot of factors, and also the drivers as well. Let's be honest. I mean, Russell is a great driver. Kubitz is not at it. Sorokin wasn't really at it. Lance Stroll, not at it. <laughs> so they've had some pretty questionable drivers as well the last few years. Yeah, I, I, one thing I didn't realize. I only saw an interview with Kubitz. I know it's been a while, but since Kubitz's accident, I've only just seen his hand, like his reconstructed right hand. And yeah, it exists, oh, yeah. but obviously it looks. I, I've only I just, literally only just seen it, and and I understand what. I'm, like when they said, "Oh, he's driving with his his left hand only," <laughs> you know, I, I finally understand that that news article because it was just like, surely he's got like a whole. Nope, it's just nothing. <laughs> yeah, no, his his right arm is completely different to his left. Um, I mean, it, it's an incredible. I mean, it, it's hard. You don't want to insult the guy, but he's he's done an unbelievable job to get back to F one after that. Oh, yeah. he, after all that time, I think at the, end, at the end of the day, sports cars. <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, he's just not quick enough. He's just no, I, th- I think he's out at the end of the season. I haven't heard confirmation. He should be, yeah. He I thought to... he has ste- he did, well, he's decided to step away from Williams, but I don't, I can't imagine uh, that. I mean, if I were Williams, I'd, I'd, you know, with the greatest respect to the world, I'd be wanting him out. That's nothing personally towards, like, that's not anything he's done. It's just, obviously, it's just the way things have played out in his life has, has made it so that he's not, you know, I think the, t- the team's got to take a hard view, but I think there's a bit too much pride at Williams, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I think he was quicker than Stroll in the same car, but obviously he's nowhere near as quick as Russell, especially in race pace. You know, I mean, like, like we keep saying, he is, it's, it's an unbelievable sporting comeback to do what he's done. But as a, as a race driver, he's just not there. I, I mean, if I was Williams, if, if they could afford it, keep him on as a test driver next year, bring in somebody else to partner Russell. The question is, who's going to part of Russell? I was going to ask about this. Do you think that Hulkenberg is going to go there? Do you think he'll stoop down to Williams' his old team, Louis? I don't think so. If I'm being completely honest, I think I think Hulkenberg wouldn't want to step down that far. I think he would rather go to another sport where he would be in a you know in a position to fight maybe Formula E. I don't know if there's any seats available at Formula E, but you never know. There's more and more showing up by by the day with uh, manufacturers <laughs> jumping on that. Yeah, hey, it's really growing sport, isn't it? Wow, yeah, exactly. A new thing in it. Yeah. yeah, so you know, you don't know. You may decide to hop over to Formula E. I think, if I'm being completely honest, Williams are going to probably promote from within. Probably, maybe we'll see the likes of Nicholas Latifi or something come up. Mm. There's in- Jamie Chadwick as well. I think she needs like a year in F2 if I'm being completely honest. She'll have enough points, will she? To get a super license. She might not have enough points, yeah. Yeah, I think she needs a year in Formula 2. Yeah. And some more testing. She's been been tearing the WC W series apart from what I saw. She's been doing incredible. Yeah, she just won it. (laughs) Just won it. 
It'd be interesting to see how she does in F2 or F3 for that matter. I don't know what she's doing next year, but she won't be able to join even Shadow. You know, even she had enough points. They wouldn't take that much of a risk on her. No. She's not proven in F3 or F2, I don't think. So, but it'd be interesting to see how she does. She's quick, clearly. I was just thinking about the, the Nico Hulkenberg thing. I don't see where, I don't think he'll go to Williams. I can't think of any other empty seats. There aren't any, really. I mean, theoretically, there's one at Racing Point, but we all know that Lance Stroll's going to get confirmed for next year. Yeah, He's right. waiting for a quiet it's time to announce it so there's not too much backlash from the oh, F1 fandom. Just, he's the safest. Oh, he's, oh. He's, he's, he's an all right, he's gonna get that he's seat, an all right he? driver. He's just so, <laughs> he, pardon the pun, but middle of the road. Yeah. I, I think he's all right, to be honest, but in no way does he deserve that seat ahead of someone like Hulkenberg. No. I, 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 for me, I found it criminal when Ocon got dropped out for yeah. like, and I was like come on Ocon is a great driver and I'm so glad to see that he's going to be at Renault next year yeah but realistically he should he should have been in that seat yeah he, sh- he should have been but it's just unfortunately he's been this is the way Formula 1 is now and to you know that, that's the kind of health of the sport where you're not getting the big you're not getting the drivers who can do stuff uh, into it because money talks more than ever yeah, it always has talked, it always has made a difference, but now more than ever it does, with how much money there is in the sport. Listen, um, we're talking about a Le Mans winner being... Yeah. A Le Mans winner not getting a seat, because not because of poor skill or anything, but because, you know, because of the money situation, and, and he, he, someone, basically someone's going to get... Someone who doesn't deserve the seat is going to get a look in. And speaking of Le Mans, to be fair, he could, Hulkenberg could end up there. You could end up doing World Endurance Championship. Yeah, I can see that as well. But there's a new, there's new factory um, factory openings uh, coming up in the next year or two, with obviously the hypercar spec stuff. But yeah, yeah, I mean it is difficult to see where Holcomb is going to fit into the F1 grid. I, I I agree with you, Louis. I think that Latifi will be in that second Williams next year. I think he's second in the F2 Championship, going yeah. into Abu Dhabi the last round. Nick DeVries obviously won that. We've talked about it last time. Um, and the only other seat other than that really is Alfa Romeo. But I think that I think that Giovinazzi's safe. I think because he's Italian, he's done a decent job. He's going to be a good marketing tool for them. I, I think he's safe in that seat, to be honest. Yeah, I, I do. I, well, Kimi's got two-year contract, so he's going nowhere. I think Giovinazzi will get the get the last seat. Yeah, and then otherwise, there's just no seats like really available. I, I don't know if Sebastian Vettel's even. Got a seat for next year, but Hulkenberg is not going to Ferrari. No. Be, a, be, a, be an interesting turn of events. To be fair, Hulkenberg doesn't throw it in the wall a lot. He's quite consistent. Well, he's not. He's thrown away a few opportunities. Uh, he has, but this year, Azerbaijan a couple of years right. ago. I know. I know he's a four-time world champion, but I'd seriously look at Hulkenberg to be honest. If I was in Ferrari. Yeah, I, I, no, I don't see him doing that. To be honest, I don't uh, see. I don't see him doing it. But I absolutely. <laughs> but, but like, I, from a sort of pragmatic point of view, you got to look at it and think. Actually, Hulkenberg's not bad. Like he d- Oh no, no, he's not. Bad. Like he, he hasn't made however many mistakes in f- four years now, mm-hmm. as as Vettel has. Like it, since we've gone to these new cars, <laughs> Vettel just doesn't seem to get on with them at all. He doesn't. No, he doesn't. Um, but to answer your question before, Vettel does have a contract for next year. Oh, he does. Have- no, well, that's that's that settled. But- that, that, that's that rumor gone straight away. As soon as it was thrown out, it's been reeled back in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. Well, um, let's talk about something that was highlighted before. I think Owen, you said it as well. Campos, yeah, the Formula Two team. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Oh. There's, yeah, big big moves in the. Uh, you can tell it's a slow news day when Formula One is talking about name changes and probably <laughs> new teams. So, so what is the story then? Because you've seen much more of this than me. Oh, I don't. I've seen very little. All I know is that there's. Yeah. <laughs> Let me find it. Let me find it. Cutting edge reporting on the Grid Talk podcast as always. Um, I mean, all I've heard from it is just that they're interested in joining F1. I mean, they have a quite. They've they've been in Formula Two for a few years now. I think they're just looking to, you know, make the next step. Yeah. yeah. To be fair, though, the the, <laughs> the F one is stressed that they've had no serious discussions with a new team. So I'm not into that. You know, that that, that might not be 
Well, I thought I thought that the deadline to enter a team for 2021 had already passed, or does that only apply to completely new entries? Can teams from F2 make the promotion up in theory? I don't know, actually, no. I, I, I'm I, sure I heard that. I'm sure I heard there was going to be no new team for 2021. Nobody could do any more entries. If they were going to come in, they'd have to do it in 2022. Yeah, I, I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't know the process for a new team joining because... It's a long was, one. It's a long well, yeah, there's obviously got to be a lot of work and stuff like that. Uh, but also, you know, the last, the last entry, uh, the last time that we had new teams was, what, 2010? Well, if, you if you don't include Haas, yeah, 2010. Um, I mean, yeah, okay, yeah, Haas is. I mean, I, I, I almost. Haas is an exception, Haas. to be fair. Yeah, to be fair, they, they, they're not. They're, they're not a new motorsport team. Well, no, no, they were Campos actually. They were obviously, you know, Haas was NASCAR, if I'm, if I remember correct, correctly. Um, so to, it's a similar sort of situation. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. But do you reckon they'd go for a, for a model where they buy in stuff off Ferrari? Would that be like a second thing? I don't know. Yeah, they, they could do something like that where they could buy off somebody. Um, I don't know which team, but that that could that could work. Obviously, I think Haas started F1 with something like eighty percent of their parts being identical to the Ferrari. Yeah, it, was, it used to be the joke. You can win a new Haas car comes out. It's basically just the uh, basically the tw- the mid the mid year before Ferrari uh, yeah. put on the photocopy. But that's far from a new thing, you know. That's that go go back to the old days of F one, the fifties, the sixties, seventies. You know, you'd, you'd buy a car and just put a, put an engine in, get a team together. It's nothing. It's nothing new. It's something very unique in this day and age. I think to do that. But yeah, it, it'd be interesting. I don't know what team they partner with. Ferrari is a likely one, of course, but. Maybe Mercedes, who knows? Um, yeah, I, know more, Mercedes. More team, I think we can all agree that more teams in F1 is a good thing. We need more cars in the grid. 20 just doesn't seem like enough, does it? It needs at least 22, 24 to be. If we did have more, we, I think we'd have to alter the point structure. Oh, that's an interesting one. I mean, what would you do with the points? I don't know. You'd have to stretch out, I think, a bit, a bit further down. You know, it used to be first to six, wasn't it? You got points yeah. and it was first to eight and then it's first to, you know, one to ten. I mean, the big difference is nowadays is that there's reliability. Like, like Williams, I know they ha- every time has scored, obviously, but Williams only scored once in a freak occurrence. But, you know, even with that car, they have been bulletproof reliability. You put that car in pace turns back in the 90s, like, they are closer to the front of the grid than what, like, Minardi, uh, Arrows, uh, all these terrible teams, Onyx, or, like, all these... Spiker. Spiker, yeah. <laughs> You know, the Williams in relative terms, they are a, a ways off the top of the grid. But compared to the old days before the 107% rule, they're not that far off. They're like, what, three seconds? You know, it's not that much in the grand scheme of things. They also don't blow up all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know, they've had three retirements this season from 15 races or whatever it is. And to be, wait, three, three retirements is in three cars retired. Yeah, three cars tried. Yeah, yeah. Fair, yeah. So that's actually fire yeah. last time, and uh, oh, uh, Russell incredible. crashed it in the wall in Singapore. That's it. That's it. it's incredible what they've done with the reliability of that car this season. Yeah. That's the only thing that's gone right, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's like the only thing we were saying on early podcasts was just like, great, the Williams is um, Williams is about you know a minute a lap slower but at least to get to the end of races well yeah you can you can get occurrences where you're going to pick up points off people being um you know people throwing it in the wall or 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 retiring you know and that's that's the, that's the thing i think actually reliability in general you know at the start of this hybrid era i was just thinking no way no way they're going to get to down to four or three engines you know or, or even now they're thinking about two and I'd have said that was I'd have said that was laughable two or three years ago. But we're getting to the point now where where they're not retiring. You know, it's it's actually you know we're getting to the point where you can start to think about right. Can we can we go for one engine for an entire season? Is that possible? <laughs> it's possible, but I don't want to see that. I mean, they are they are not retiring. That's true, but they are taking engine penalties. They are using more than their three allocated or whatever it is. But I think they'll get four next year because be twenty two races. So they get, they get four engines instead of three. I think that's a rule. Well, we're on 21 now. So actually for one race extra, you know, in an entire calendar and getting a, an entire extra power unit, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, because it's Fresh not just racing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was that, Louis? 
to get a fresh engine, a fresh engine showdown in Abu Dhabi next year. <laughs> I'd actually quite like that, to be honest. I'd prefer the same setup, and then you know everyone gets a fresh engine right at the oh, end. Now no, do it the other way. Do it so they have to use the most worn engines, make the end, make the race more entertaining. Because Abu Dhabi's not really that good usually, is it? <laughs> Trying to survive. Get some old-fashioned turbo failures, flames coming out of the back of it. I'm sure, I'm sure the safety people won't like that, but it's entertaining to watch. So yeah, what what are our predictions for the race? And I'm gonna I'm gonna stick my neck out. I'm gonna go first. Let's go. Let's just go for the winner to start with. I'm gonna go with because I don't know how accurate that rain forecast is. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna assume it's gonna be a dry race. I'm Hold gonna on. go with. Where, where, where did you get yours from? Uh, Google. You can't get it on BBC. Um, hold on, hold on. I'll go on. Have a look what it, it just says. Rain. It's not weather. hour by hour. It just says it's gonna rain just on go. Sunday. Okay. I don't know when. Right. I don't know how much, but it's just gonna rain. That's what it says anyway. It could come at any time, and it could just not rain. We've seen it loads of times before where well, wasn't it France or something this year or last year when they were just like, oh the rain's on the way and it was like bl- gleaming sunlight, <laughs> not a cloud in sight. Yeah, that, I Dhabi. that I didn't understand to be honest. <laughs> Abu Dhabi last year it's spots of rain in five minutes. What? <laughs> that's mad that isn't it? Like, middle of the desert, no, that's not going to happen. Um, I yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume, assume it's gonna be a dry race, and I'm gonna go for a man that's won a lot around there in the past. I'm gonna go for Sebastian Vettel for the win. I know a bold one, but let's see. So, Wayne, who are you going for for the win? I'm gonna go with Max Verstappen. Ooh, you think it's I, prefer, I prefer Hamilton to win, but I think Max Verstappen would be probably <laughs> the winner. Louis? Actually, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna go with Lewis Hamilton. I think three different winners. Three different winners, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Hamilton has done pretty well there in the past. He has won five times in Japan, four times around Suzuki. He does all right. Um, so does the Mercedes as well, but this year does seem a bit different. Um, so I'm going to con- it's the rest of the podium. I'm going to continue the theme of it being dry. So Vettel for the win. We've got Hamilton second and Charles Leclerc third. A win. Oh. By the way, it's going to, uh, according to my one, it's going to rain. So, if you think it's going to rain, you can adjust your results accordingly. Oh, if it rains, who's better in the wet? Who's better in the wet? I hope it is a wet race. It'd be more entertaining. It would be more entertaining. I think Germany a, is a proper outlier. I don't think that's indicative <laughs> of people's form in, in the wet. Could be out for the podium. Go on. Nice him on there, mate. Oh. <laughs> Japan's it's quite a lot cool. like Hungary as well, to be fair. Sort of. It's quite technical, points. difficult to overtake. Yeah. Narrow. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna put I'm gonna put ha- Hamilton on first instead. Oh, uh, he's, he's changing. No, yeah, on, he's back. Verstappen second. Don't see Vettel doing well, to be honest. Ooh. I'm gonna put Albon on the third step. Alright. I, th- I think he needs I think he needs uh, he needs a podium or something like that to show how good he is, but he's obviously gonna get I think he's gonna get the Red Bull seat, he'll be fine. Yeah, be all right. like of all the people, probably, he's probably better. Yeah, Louis. If it is a wet race, I can't see Ferrari getting on the podium. If I'm being completely honest, okay. I think they rely a little too much on their sort of power, and then if it fails, then they don't. They're not particularly great. Um, so I'm going to go with so Lewis Hamilton win. Max Verstappen second, and then Valtteri Bottas third. Very different opinions from all from us all here. It's gonna. Be, I think that shows that it is going to be a close race. We hope it's going to be a close race and a good race at that. Um, but yeah, bold prediction time. I am gonna say. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Carlos Sainz to get a top five finish. I'm gonna go for a few retirements, a bit of chaos, maybe maybe if it rains. But yeah, I'm gonna go. Call us signs for the top five. Owen? Hmm. I don't know. Oh, William for points. A. Williams for points. Is that, is that, is that a bold enough prediction? <laughs> that is absolutely bold AF. That is, uh, <laughs> that is as bold as you can get. That's Patrick Stewart bold, that. That's great. Top line, Owen. I was thinking, oh, Russell in a point, maybe. Thinking, oh, I'd like Russell. I'd like Russell. He's not yeah. got any points this season. He's the one guy not to score. Yeah, I'd like Russell to get points because the bits of getting more points would be awful. <laughs> the bits are higher in the championship. Yeah, so unfair, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go then with Stroll in the top six. 
all the time. Well, you did really well in Germany. If it rains, you never know. He does do well in a chaotic race. He got a podium yeah. in Baku, got his fourth in. He does quite. He does do quite well at not putting a foot wrong. Yeah, when the pressure's on everybody else, he seems to do better. It's weird, isn't it? Um, so yeah, that those are our bold predictions, and uh, and that is the podcast. Uh, thank you for joining us, lads. I really do appreciate it on this Sunday morning. It's no problem. Uh, and uh, and yeah, obviously still available on YouTube. Search uh, Grid Talk Podcast, Spotify, Google, Apple. Pocket Casts, what else are we on? We're on, we're on Omni Studio as well. Yeah, I think you have to search for a new F1 podcast looking for feedback and look for the Grid Talk podcast. That's some good suggestions on there. We've tried to implement them. So thank you very much for that. We'll be back in a week's time to review the Japanese Grand Prix. Hopefully it'll be a good race and hopefully it'll be close at the front as well. I mean, you never know. Even a Williams could score points. <laughs> thank I you for listening. To that thank decision, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, you probably are. Uh, thank you, thank you, for, thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Les, for joining once again. Keep it tuned to the F1 Chronicle in the meantime, and also check out our back catalogue of episodes. You want to see how wrong we've got our predictions in the past. <laughs> thank you. We've actually much. been right. <laughs> I'm sure at some points we have been right. I never check them to be honest. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining us, and we will see you next week. Until then, bye bye.